This is Amy Agenda. Thanks for your company this morning. With me now, Labor frontbencher Sid Sidebottom and Liberal MP Josh Frydenberg. Gentlemen, good morning to, to you both. Good Sid, uh, what, what do you make of this KPMG report? It, it seems to be critical of Fair Work Australia, but not uh, debunking the outcomes of the, the overall report. That seems to be what Bill Shorten is saying. So the findings were that Craig Thompson does have um, answers that he needs to, uh, or questions that he needs to answer in the civil in, in the civil courts. What do you make of it? Well, uh, not being a lawyer and um, just coming across this today, like everyone else, um, I, I suppose what it's uh, it's made certain um, recommendations and suggestions about the process that Fair Work Australia under, undertook. And, uh, and we're already moving on those. Uh, there are other proceedings taking place now, in Victoria, for instance, uh, and those processes need to take place. So the report said Fair Work Australia uh, could have done things a hell of a lot better and faster and, uh, and uh, more efficiently and effectively. Uh, and, uh, but we have other legal processes underway now and, uh, and they will take their course. Apparently parts of the, the, the act under which Fair Work Australia was operating were instituted by the former government. Um, do, you, do you think that there should be any accountability held by the lawmakers in the past who have, have come up with this scenario which has led to such a debacle? Not at all. I think what uh, this KPMG report has found is that there were insufficient prosecutors who were ready for investigators within Fair Work Australia to look into these, uh, to these claims and allegations against Craig Thompson, that they didn't pursue all avenues of information. I think Erica Betts is absolutely right, Kieran, to say that Craig Thompson's a lucky boy because if, in fact, they had pursued further avenues of information, the charges could have even been greater. But there are more than 150 findings from Fair Work Australia that haven't been challenged by this KPMG report. And at the essence of it is that the lower-paid HSU workers have had hundreds of thousands of dollars of their own money misused, spent on prostitutes and the lavish lifestyle by Craig Thompson, and he has to be held to account this, on it. This is something that I put to Craig Thompson earlier, that regardless of what happens in this from the Fair Work Australia investigation or for that matter the police investigations that the, the court of public opinion has decided on, on him that they don't believe him well, well again, that's true, isn't it? Well, well, I, I don't know. I can't account for uh, the uh, court of public opinion. Uh, all I can say is that allegations are made. Those allegations must be tested. Uh, we have we have uh, comments by the opposition um, making judgments already, uh, and we have newspapers and commentators making judgments already. Uh, allegations are made. They must be tested, and those and, and when they are tested, then I think you, people can arrive at, I think, conclusions that uh, in fact have been uh, on the public record and are tested. As such, and until then, they remain allegations. But, there's, but they're still taking the vote of Craig Thompson on the floor. I mean, this government is in power because of Craig Thompson's vote, and there's no getting away from that, Sid. That's why, right. we, as a, that's why we as a coalition are saying we need to have a registered organisations commission to actually give um, voice to the thousands and thousands of workers who have had the money misused by the unions. We want to absolutely upgrade the legislation that's in yeah. place natural, and the oversight. Yeah. Well, natural justice says when allegations are made against you, me or anyone else, including Craig, uh, that uh, those allegations must be tested. And he's, not good enough for party. Well, he's not good enough for no, your party, but he's good enough he, for your vote. He has, done, he has done nothing illegal. Well, then take it back into the party. He has done yeah. nothing illegal, but we also have standards in the parliament that suggest that, suggest that uh, when uh, when standards may have been or have gone beyond what uh, the public may regard as uh, uh, as um, serious terrible. allegations, serious allegations, uh, then uh, you're taking in the parliament, vote, but you're still in, taking his vote. Well, you're not up for the party. I'm, I'm giving you my answer. Okay, you've, you've made a suggestion uh, that um, Craig has not done anything illegal, has not broken any of the rules of the parliament, but Craig has made the decision. Uh, to sit on the cross benches and has acted accordingly. He pushed now, him there. Has acted accordingly. The Prime Minister pushed and, him there. And, right. and Craig has made that decision and has done the right thing there. Okay, well, and we will await the processes that are now underway in terms of allegations that is natural justice, that is only fair.
Okay, well, let's move on to the Slater and Gordon matter, the transcript yeah. reported on the front page of the Australian newspaper today. It's sloppy at best, isn't it, uh, Sid Sidebottom? Wouldn't, wouldn't a statement by the Prime Minister clear it up? Well, the, the Prime Minister, there have been no allegations of Ill Ill illegality. The Prime Minister has, and this has happened years ago, years ago, uh, the firm itself has said that it's satisfied uh, with, the, uh, with the Prime Minister's um, response at that time and uh, when she was a, a, a partner in the firm. Someone's just the, saying this stuff, aren't they? The, 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 the transcripts, well, surprise, the surprise, information. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Well, 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 no, no. well, why would you be hardly surprised? There are people who want to do damage to this government and to this Prime Minister and uh, these people go about their business and then others take it up and it's, uh, and it, and it's presented right through the media um, both social media and uh, the more mainstream media and people want to drag this stuff up to do damage but I mean you admit that's, that, that, that's, that's the type of, of, of performance that's in the United States currently and is now making its way into Australia this is 17 years ago no illegality, the firm themselves have made that statement. Right, let's let the response to well, that. Well, you know, so this is much ado about nothing, right. a beat up. Well, Peter Gordon well, has said, the senior, former senior partner did say, as, as Sid uh, has alluded to, that he believed at the time that they, that, that, that Julia Gillard, at the, the, as a senior lawyer at the po at point, deserved the benefit of the doubt. Well, Rob McClellan, the former Attorney General, I point out to sit in the Gillard government, was the one who put this out there on the public record. So this is definitely blue on blue. But it doesn't matter if it's these Slater and Gordon allegations or the sordid Craig Thompson allegations or the backroom deals to get Peter Slipper in the chair or the character assassination of Kevin Rudd. This is a um, tawdry, this is a rotten, this is a smelly government, Kieran, and it's time it's got to go. It has debased our democracy, Sid. Yeah, the, what you've been getting up to is absolutely debased our democracy, and this is just another allegation that's actually been put out there by your own side that makes everybody in the public lose confidence in this how, minority how, how government. How do you know that it was put out there? This because, is in the Australian newspaper. No, well, the Australian newspaper has been following it up, but it was actually Robert McClellan, the Attorney General in the Gillard government, who actually went under parliamentary privilege, went public with the with this information. He's the one who put it out there, Sid. You can't deny that. I think uh, what we've got here is a classic example of, it's a little bit like the economy, you've got an opposition who are determined to determine to be negative. <laughs> uh, well, well, it is. You just only have to listen to the language you just used then. Um, you know, and when, no, when you look at the facts, it's like the economy. You've got an opposition who are determined to talk the economy down down, to talk the government down, to talk to Julia Gillard down, and that's demonstrated by the behaviour in the House, it's demonstrated right. by the behaviour out of the House, and by Josh's, the use of his language, and these images and the framing that they use, uh, that uh, this is the end of the world, who and Australia is finished who was, as a country. Who was attacking Tony Abbott yesterday for a so-called attitude towards women? Your side. I mean, uh, let's not pretend well, that you're not playing the man the whole time. We don't need to. to yeah, we're playing Tony. the man you the whole time. behaviour, and you know, a television camera can show you that behaviour in the house as well. So, you know, this, this silly talk, and the Australian people must be absolutely pulling their hair out. Uh, that this is the commentary government. that we're dealing with at the moment, when in actual fact, if you look at the record after two years, a strong economy, one of the best in the world, uh, well, it is, Josh, and yet I can't deny it, and all we've had from you, Blakes, is no, 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 negativity, and then the oh, language you use, you, which we just heard on the on this program. Josh, to, to wrap up, we're about 50 seconds well, we bequeath this government a great economy. We left you $70 billion in the bank and no government debt. After paying, paying $96 billion of labour debt, that's now led to a position where we've got $145 billion debt. The interest alone would pay for an NDIS. This government is terrible in terms of its economic management and it's even worse in terms of its integrity. And you've got a $70 well, billion dollar black hole, Josh. You can't even fill that hole in, let no carry on with the language well, you are today. On, on that positive note, why don't we just wrap up the conversation? Thanks, Sid Sidebottom, Josh Frame. Thanks, 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 thanks for your time. That's all Frame Agenda. The, uh, the news is next as well as we're going to have live coverage a little bit later in the hour of uh, Terry Nassios from the Fair Work Australia. He's going to be before a parliamentary committee here at, uh, Ca yeah, here at Canberra's Parliament House, 9.45. So we'll have live coverage of that as well. So stay with us.